Hey everyone, today I want to talk about how we can procedurally render spheres in Reality Kit for Vision OS. And the way I'm going to do that is by talking you through my port of the first part in Sebastian Legg's video series on procedural planets in Unity. And it's an amazing video series and it's an amazing channel overall. And I highly recommend you check out that video because it goes into the details of the uh, algorithm behind this method. Um, I'm just going to focus more on the reality kit aspect of this implementation. And I'll touch on the kind of algorithm as well. Um, but you should definitely watch this video for more background information on what we're doing. And I want to start by looking at how we can render a very simple triangle. So I'm in Xcode here, and just as a heads up, I'm using Xcode 16 and I'm using Vision OS uh, 2 because I was having issues with Vision OS uh, 1 and getting all of this to run. So the key question I want to answer here is how do we render this red triangle? And as you can see, we have a red triangle here and we have a black kind of sphere, a black point. And if we look at the code on the left, um, we can see that we have a reality view which allows us to um, embed reality kit content in a Swift UI app, which is what we have running here. And the black sphere at the center is indicative of where the origin of this reality view lies. This reality view is embedded in a volume. And so the center of the volume is the origin of the coordinate space of this reality view. And so Given that, let's now try to understand how this red triangle is um, rendered. And the answer is quite simple once you understand it. But the way it works is that we essentially create a model entity. And this model entity has two inputs. It has a mesh and a materials parameter. The mesh is of type mesh resource. And it and, and, and a mesh resource is a class that defines um, a mesh based on a set of vertices and edges. And we can see that this mesh resource is initialized with an array of mesh descriptors. And we only have one mesh descriptor in this case. And this mesh descriptor is defined above, right here. And what we're doing is we're setting the descriptor positions to an array of positions. And you can think of these positions or they are vertices in space. So we can take a look at this first position, which is negative one, negative one, zero. So negative one on the X axis, negative one on the Y axis and zero on the Z axis. So if we start at the origin and we go left one and we go down one, we have a vertex, which represents the bottom left corner of the triangle. Then the middle vertex here is one, negative one, zero. And so again, if we start from the origin and we go uh, over one on the X axis and we go down one on the Y axis, we are at the bottom right corner of the triangle. And if we're at the origin again, and starting at zero, moving across the x-axis zero, we remain at the origin. We move up one along the y-axis and we move zero along the z-axis. We're at the top corner of the triangle. And then 
based on this uh, set of vertices, uh, which totals three, we can define that we want to create a triangle um, using vertices zero, one, and two. And once we set that definition on this mesh descriptor and initialize a mesh resource with that and assign it a color uh, or a, a material with a red color, we can see that it renders a triangle. Okay, so let us have a quick look at this blog post of Spheres and Cubes by Stephen Wittens in which he goes into some detail on what we're doing. And this image right here on the top left is what we're building. We're building this quad cube. And so in order to create a sphere, we're building a cube first and then projecting each vertex onto a sphere. And the end result is that we get something that resembles a sphere. And conceptually what we're doing is we're starting with a cube. And in order to build the cube, we have to create geometry for each side of the cube. And in order to create a sphere that is more round, we need more detail in that cube. And that is what the resolution is about. So let's actually now go into Reality Kit and have a look at this view, terrain face view. And this view is responsible to is, is responsible to render a single face of the cube and perform the projection onto the sphere. So we can see that we have the top of a sphere here. Um, and I will explain to you all what these points represent as we go through the algorithm right now. So, um, and just as an FYI, I'm scaling down this root entity by uh, a factor of 0 0.2 because we're creating a unit cube and a single unit uh, in reality kit is a meter. So uh, if we have a cube of dimensions one by one by one, that is one meter by one meter by one meter. And that's just a little bit big for what we want to work with in Swift UI preview. So I'm scaling it down by a factor of 0 0.2. So the other thing I'll mention is that we're adding a sphere here and with a color black at position zero. So that represents the origin of the coordinate space in the reality kit, in the reality view we're working in right now. All right, so let's now look at the function create terrain face with resolution six and with a local up of zero, one, zero. So the local up represents the local up of the side of the cube we are working with. And so the side that has a local up uh, that is pointing upwards on the y-axis is at the top of the cube. And so when we call this function create terrain face, we're essentially just creating a model entity with a mesh resource whose mesh resource is described by a mesh descriptor, descriptor created by this function construct terrain face mesh. And this is the port of Sebastian's code into reality kit um, and so let's have a quick look of what's going on here we're first uh, creating two axes axes a and axes b axes a um, is perpendicular to um, the local up and axes b is perpendicular to both of those axes as well so they're essentially going to be the axes of the 2D coordinate system of the um, square we are creating for the current um, face of 
the terrain face mesh. And for that 2D coordinate system, we need a set of vertices and a set of triangles that represent how we should uh, create the mesh for that face. And we just create an, a triangle index for the triangle array. And then we loop over the resolution um, on the y-axis and on the x-axis. Because again, we're thinking in terms of 2D now, we're just worrying about the one face of the cube. And so um, we are calculating a percentage value here uh, to create points along the x and y axes. And this is where we actually calculate each vertex position on the cube. And this point on unit cube is a point where I'm adding a sphere with a color red. So you can see that all the points that are created, um, all these vertex positions that are created at the first step in this inner for loop are these red spheres, these red points that we see rendered in the preview here on the right. And so that's this point on unit cube, all of these points um, are these red spheres. Now, the next step is kind of the crucial step in converting the cube to the sphere. Because here what we're doing is normalizing the point on unit cube. And when we're normalizing this uh, point, what we're doing is we're saying that we want it to have a magnitude of one. And so you can see that the outer points um, on the, um, oh, let's see, I gotta fix this issue here real quick. All right, we can see that the outer points on this square are further away from the center, from the origin, than the inner points. Um, and so when we're normalizing it, we're ensuring that they're all equidistant from the origin, which ends up resulting in this spherical looking shape. For instance, um, if I were to um, set the vertex to be the point on unit cube instead of unit sphere, we can see that we just get a sphere, right? But we're actually setting it to the point on unit sphere and the end result is that we're now drawing triangles between the vertices that have been normalized, resulting in the sphere-like shape. And then we're creating triangles that connect all these vertices and just adding that to a mesh descriptor, with, like we did with the triangle earlier. All right, amazing. So uh, let's just play around with this a little more. For instance, we can create a sec, we can call this method a second time and we can set this to, let's say, one. Um, and we probably just don't wanna have this pointing there. But so now we're, we have the second part of the cube and we can, uh, I guess we can fully construct a cube here um, by just rendering each side of the mesh, right? And so um, if I, do that, um, we will have, you know, a couple of the faces of the cube. Um, and we can see how we can actually just build up the solution from there. But that's actually um, what a separate entity is for. So what I've done here is I've uh, just taken this logic of constructing the terrain face mesh and I've embedded that in a um, static function on a struct called terrain face 
called construct mesh. And then I've created a entity that's called planet. And this entity called planet, um, when it gets initialized, it's, it takes a resolution and a array of materials and it just calls its internal initialize function. The internal initialize function has an array of direction vectors that are pointing up, down, left, right, forward, and backward, and then just constructing a terrain face for each of those directions, just what we did. And the end result is that we can create a reality view um, and we can instantiate a planet, which is a planet entity, and we can add that planet entity to our root and we have a procedurally generated sphere. And in this instance here, I'm also rendering out um, just uh, the axis of the local coordinate system. So we have the blue axis, which is the Z axis, uh, the red axis, which is the X axis, and the Y axis is green. And um, from here on out, um, in the preview down here, we're seeing that we are creating a planet view with a resolution of four and a material, uh, simple material of color red with metallic set to true. So what we can do is we can set the resolution to 10 and we can set change the color to blue and what we should see is a sphere. And as we increase the level of detail by increasing the resolution, we can see that the shadows are just, the reflections on the sphere are just much more accurate because we have much more detail in the sphere. But we do see that on the seams here that it's, it's not perfect, um, but it becomes less and less of an issue as we increase the resolution. And if we, again, decrease the resolution to two, we just get a cube. And if we decrease it to four, um, it'll, it'll, it'll just be a little rougher. Um, and so, yeah, this is it for now. Um, I'm going to keep playing around with procedural generation and reality kit. And um, I'll be putting out more content on this YouTube channel um, about this topic. So if there's anything that you want to see, please let me know. And uh, until next time.